Thank you, Meg. And welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, I think I'm going to do a very quick, quick brief introduction. Um, so I'm Vivek Pandit. I lead, our, I lead McKinsey's principal and um, investment practice uh, globally. Uh, I have, therefore, the honor of convening our work in social and sustainability investment. Uh, I can see a number of you in the crowd that we've worked with over the years. We do have a new report out. It's called Catalyzing the Growth of the Impact Economy. And I thought I'd just spend a few minutes talking about what we mean about the impact economy, maybe a few provocative uh, words on the actors in that economy. Um, so the impact economy would have you believe that it's important, just as we have accounts for our corporations and budgets for our governments, that we have an impact account and an impact balance sheet. And that impact account, impact balance sheet would not just apply to corporations and governments. You'd imagine that might apply to philanthropists. It might apply to a whole group of people whose sources of surplus we so rely on. And corporations whose sources of surplus sometimes aren't as green as we'd like them to be. You might imagine, and we heard Bono talk about this, that we do need a revolution. I was thinking the other day that you know, it's been, what, six, six, seven days ago we were celebrating Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. Uh, what would a modern Mahatma Gandhi say about where we are today relative to sustainability goals? What would a modern Mahatma Gandhi do? I suspect he would probably fast until every child was fed. He would likely have every public service official and senior executive with means send their children and their families to public schools public education, use public transport, and live in public housing until it met the standards that they felt mattered. I suspect he would probably have the media uh, work with him and, you know, we have, we have something from the media for the richest, the biggest, the prettiest. Somehow the language of human progress has, ev has evaded the media and in doing so we have lost the language of dignity, equality, generosity, uh, and many of those things that our sustainability and development goals hold so dear. One of the things that we address in the report is this question of actors and how actors may have to shift. Uh, a lot of people like to question whether a market-based system is one we should trust to solve development goals. And with good reason, there's lots of suspicion. Uh, but what I would like to argue for a moment is the system isn't bad. We just need the actors to re-envision their own roles. And if I may take a few examples, and we're, we'll have a panel today talking about some of this. The government, from a world of allocating budgets, creating infrastructure, and tracking initiatives, which, by the way, many governments do very well, to a world in which they enable more public-private partnerships, they, 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 they enable partnerships, um, they mobilize risk capital, and they purchase innovation. They purchase innovation. They purchase some of the outcomes. How much better would it be for us to be able to purchase unemployment, purchase less homelessness, and purchase less pollution? If we're going to mobilize capital to these ends, we need to have innovation that allows us to, that we need to have the capital that drives innovation, and governments can play an important role. But this requires a little bit of a shift in their mindset that they aren't the monopoly, if you will, or the quasi-monopoly on public service and delivery. You might imagine consumers uh, might want to go from being treated like misinformed, you know, uh, people who simply are looking for bigger, faster, cheaper, uh, and can actually use their purchasing power to make decisions and to mobilize companies, mobilize producers of services and goods to finally move the system forward. 